Singapore was going to be occupied by the Japanese in February 1942. We were terrified when the race riots in 1964 erupted. There was panic and fear. In each crisis, people and leaders shared a common worry for our future. And it is this deep sense of crisis that helped us rise to the challenge and make painful adjustments. We are in such a crisis today. Now SARS is very special. From mid-March to the end of May, we united as one people to protect the health and safety of everyone. Now this is an experience that bonded us as one people, regardless of the race, language, and religion. So I have renewed confidence that we have that unity, that cohesion, that strength to overcome our difficulties. There are already signs of an economic recovery. The U.S. economy is picking up and our exports to the U.S. will increase. If there are no upsets, we will make positive growth this year. How much? Well, I quote MTI figures, 0.5 to 2.5 percent. But I tend to believe, because of the hit we've taken March to June, is nearer the lower end. Now, despite the global economic downturn, this is the crucial part. We in Singapore are drawing new investments and generating new jobs. Our problem are the workers who missed ITE because we didn't have ITE. We didn't have so many polys. We had four language streams, and they did not finish post-secondary, and many only completed primary six. That's a big problem, and they're only 45 years old, some even in early 40s, and they got another 20 years of work ahead of them. That's a problem. Because the new jobs coming in, as you can see, only 25% unskilled. And all the factory operators will now have to seriously consider going back to night classes or schools. But it's tough. I, t I tell you it's tough because, you know, I did not work a computer. So after a while, I was out of the loop. I spent months repeating how repeating again and again how to use that computer. Finally, I'm in the loop. But it's, it's tough, but it, it is doable. If you are determined to do it, if you are prepared to sweat it out, you can do it. And I started learning at about 70, about seven, 10 years ago. So to the older workers, I say, I understand the problem. I understand it was not your fault. I cannot say it was the government's fault because we did the best we could with the resources we had. Now, the jobs we lost through SARS will come back after six to 12 months. Air travel in the region will grow more strongly than before, in my view. And reading all the forecasts. I see no shortage of jobs for pilots and cabin crew. But the structure of the airline industry will change as it has changed in America and in Europe. Budget carriers will compete against mainline airlines and carry more new travelers, especially in short-haul flights, those under three hours. The competition will not be so acute in the long-haul flights, because if you're cramped up 
for seven, eight hours or 12, 13 hours to London, you may die of DVT. So better pay the extra and travel by Singapore Airlines. <laughs> so it means pilots, cabin crew, ground staff will face temporary unemployment, but they can expect a return in demand because there's going to be a huge explosion of travel in East Asia. All the airline manufacturers, all the aircraft manufacturers tell me that. You see, with SARS, you lose jobs, pilots get retrenched, ground staff gets down, well, can't be helped, but that's temporary. But when you lose jobs in labor-intensive factories because they've moved to China, that's not going to come back. And this is not just a problem for us. China is affecting countries as far away as Mexico and Brazil. So you, you see the kind of competition, the squeeze that the world is feeling when 1 billion 200 people, 200 million people enter the free market. Now, unlike previous downturns for us this time, It's affected our white-collar workers, including middle management. This is a structural change. I believe Singapore wages can remain moderately higher than those in these low-wage countries. But we must justify this premium if we are better educated, better skilled workers with higher productivity. But we must restructure our wage system to make it flexible keep the burden of statutory costs low, like CPF or social insurance. Hence, our emphasis on wage reform. But finally, from my own experience, in any battle, morale and the spirit of a people will decide the outcome. If you go to, into battle, and we are going into battle to make this transition, believing that we, <laughs> we will never make it, you might as well give up. I never believed that we would fail. I knew it was going to be tough, like climbing up the face of a cliff. But we had the guts and the determination, and we climbed up the face of that cliff. Now, let me spell out the strengths we have that have seen us through several major crises. We have the best educated and skilled and disciplined workers in Southeast Asia. And most important, this present team of ministers is now tried, tested, and proven. If it is my generation, and rest to say, what's their lifespan? But you know, this was done by people who are now in their 40s and 50s. In other words, investors coming here know that there is strong and capable government in Singapore, at least for the next 10 to 15 years. This means more investments, more factories, more regional HQs, therefore more jobs. Finally, the scope of our economic catchment. To expand our markets over the last two years, the government has woven a, net, a network of closer economic ties with the biggest economies in the world, giving Singapore an edge. This means products made in Singapore enjoy an advantage in exports to these countries, creating more jobs. Now, because we can do that, we will get more investments, and not just American investments coming here to export to America. You know, SARS was a tremendous PR problem. We went through an agonizing, fearful, wrenching period. But every day that it was reported, and there were huge columns in the American newspapers and British newspapers, and I assume many other newspapers, Germans and others, because when I met them, they knew all about it, describing in detail how we met each problem methodically. 
We quarantine. Others hesitated. Then they followed us. We enforced the quarantine. Others could not enforce the quarantine. We had people who broke the quarantine. Says, we put a web webcam and says, you answer and you go before that webcam. <laughs> you escape. We put. <coughs> we'll put an electronic gadget on your ankles and we'll know that you have left. <laughs> but we had a cooperative population. We are a different population. It is a population that knew its survival was at stake and cooperated with each other and with the government. Cisco guards serving home quarantine orders offered to buy food for the people they served these orders on. And they were quite... Cisco has about 60% Malays. And they were offering Chinese home quarantine orders. You tell me what you want, I'll help you buy it. That's Singapore. But I'll tell you one great difficulty for this government. The difference between 2003 and 1965. In 65, we were hungry, we were poor, we were hardworking. We were prepared to try anything. Today, we have grown accustomed to a higher level of comfort and prosperity. You know, NTUC didn't meet in a hall like this, with air conditioning, with TV monitors. We sat on hard benches without backs. So you f many find belt tightening uncomfortable, and the fear of unemployment makes everybody nervous. But let me assure you that the ministers have thoroughly studied all the options and know that the best approach is to take on the challenge head on, even if it calls for painful measures. And they know what they are doing. And they are doing it in close collaboration with the NTUC leaders in order to soften and lighten the burden on workers. Sunday on We Mean Business. Seven young people from Hong Kong create a bustling business providing information on demand. Unity is strength on We Mean Business, Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Calling everyone, are you all ready to sow a patch of love for Singapore? How are our workers going to reconcile the need to reduce wage costs with the, in face of rising costs in public services? We have to cut costs in every possible way. As you move up the technology ladder, Labour as a component of production goes down in percentage terms. So if you run a garment factory, you are making garments, labour costs probably come to about 50-60% of your costs, besides rents and other utilities, transport, etc. But if you run an IT company, your labor costs may be just 15, 20%. Company tax, we are down to 20%, but personal income tax, we are still at 22%, but going down to 20 The biggest problem is land, rents. <clears throat> we allowed or we did not check the rise in land prices and property prices. It went too high. That is a problem. Can we bring it down quickly? I think it's very dangerous because if you bring it down quickly, we'll be like Hong Kong. Everybody depressed, property values gone down. Yes, you bring the Suntec City values down, that's all right. <laughs> maybe OCBC building or DBS building or UOB or OUB. But 
is all interlinked. And finally, you find your three-room flat may be worth less. So we have to adjust this in a gradual manner, preferably by getting our economy up, increasing productivity, and maybe, as you will see, the Sing dollar is a little bit down by 2-3%. All these little things help to maintain a certain stability as we make this transition, but we will try and keep land costs down. Now you mentioned transport and hospitals. You can't just choose transport and hospitals and say, well, you've got a utilities. These are things which are all in a package which we calculate in cost of living. We decided as a matter of basic principle that it's better to give the man the cash and he decides what he's going to do. When you subsidize a product or a service, you distort consumption. It's no longer economic. The open market, supply and demand settling the price is the most efficient way of settling what a service or a product is worth. You want cheaper bus service, then we cut down the air conditioning, have the open buses, back to the old days. I mean, you take this Bangkok station. <laughs> SBS Transit is going to lose money on that northeast line. They misjudged the user. They bid. They expected 250,000 250, users. Now it's only 150,000. Yes, it may make some bus changes, take away some services, rearrange them. Maybe it'll go up to 170, 180,000. But they were, they bid in the expectation of 250,000 travelers. You want them to lower costs? <laughs> All right, SBS lowers costs by edict from the government. Minister says, please lower costs. SBS folds up bankrupt. Who takes over? <laughs> Health service. One of the biggest problems we face today is what to do to make sure that you have enough MediSafe. Because every year, new discoveries, new medicines that will cure more diseases which are difficult to cure today, but they're going to cost a lot of money. And you're going to live longer, and you're going to take your money out at 55, and the money is blown, and you live till 70, 80, you turn up at the MPS session, see your MP. <laughs> so we have to change all that. As the world changes, we have to change. There's nothing which is static. Instead of subsidizing goods and services, we say, here's your money, here's the shares we're going to give you when we privatize. You want to spend it? That's your lookout. And I'll tell you, we watch. Over 90% don't spend it, they keep it, which is very good, just like keeping your house. So when they get old, we say reverse mortgage. They are most unhappy because they want to own the house until they die. Well, not a bad ambition, but they've got something. Supposing they got nothing. Supposing we've just subsidized rents. Houses will be in the, all homes in bad condition, not theirs. So what? And they don't have property. We have made Singapore an asset-owning, property-owning society. And you want to remain that way, you pay the cost of the product or the service you use. The red light district in Galang area. <laughs> now, uh, this is something that is important because uh, we have three MRT stations there, and there are a lot of tourists uh, using the MRT track going to uh, Changi Airport. Maybe we should... Uh, relocate all this red-like area into one of our neighboring islands. As for getting an island for a red-light district, <laughs> I don't think you can compete with Batam. <laughs> Best
best, best leave these things to market forces. <laughs> and the police will know how to get things within control. <laughs> Would it be possible, I'm not suggesting relocating Geylang, but whether we could create a special economic scheme or economic zone to accommodate the need of this growing popula working population, growing uh, aging population. Our senior citizens, other IT, we can't cope. Telemarketing uh, and all those desk-bound jobs, uh, they call it back office job, which has been outsourced by the hundreds of thousands of uh, 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 jobs. This we are able to cope. For those 55 and above, I think IT is not the only job. We have to really rechange change our mindset. If we can squeeze down the difference between entry pay and final senior pay, which is now about nearly one to two, and bring it down, say, to one to 1.5, then the desire of the employer to get rid of the older workers and hire new ones will not be so great. One doctor who used to be a family doctor, rather was very close to my age, I think he works three or four times a week and still keeps his hand in. He is not so active, he can't uh, go home visits at night. And that's the kind of society we must try and create for ourselves. We are not going to die at 60 as we used to. That's a problem for the government. <laughs> it is a very serious problem for the Europeans because the population is shrinking, less young people to work to keep the economy going. They're getting immigrants from North Africa who are mostly different from them and different religions, Muslims and so on, so they're very unhappy, but they're in for very serious trouble. So let's adjust, try and make life as feasible for everybody as possible. Sunday, 